Holy Bible Reading to Request Divine Union, Part 87. We continue with Chronicles of the Old Testament. Chapter 9, The Return from Captivity to Jerusalem. And the census was of all Israel, those who had been inscribed in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, along with those banished to Babylon in their lawlessness, and those who dwelled formerly with their possessions in the cities of Israel, and the priests, the Levites, and those to whom permission had been given. Then some of the children of Judah dwelt in Jerusalem along with some of the children of Benjamin and the children of Ephraim and Manasseh, Uthai, the son of Amihud, and the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, and of the descendants of Perez, the son of Judah. Of the Silonites, Isaiah, the firstborn, and his sons, and of sons of Zerah, Jewel, and their brethren, 690. Of the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the sons of Meshulam, the son of Hodavia, the son of Hasenua, Ibenea, the son of Jeroham, Elah, the son of Uzi, the son of Mikri, Meshulam, the son of Shephatia, the son of Ruel, the son of Ib. Ibnijah, and their brethren according to their generations, 956. All these men were heads of the families according to the houses of their fathers. The priests in Jerusalem. Of the priests, they were Jediah, Jehoiarib, and Jachin, Azariah the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meriaoth, the son of Ahitub, the officer over the house of God, Adiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Pashur, the son of Malki, Malchijah, Maasi, the son of Adel, Adiel, the son of Jareza, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshilemith, the son of Emer, and their brethren, heads of the houses of their fathers, 1,760. They were very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. The Levites in Jerusalem. Of the Levites, Shemaiah the son of Hasub, the son of Azrikam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Merari, Bakakar, Heresh, Gailal, and Mataniah, the son of Mika, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph. Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Gilal, the son of Jeduthun, and Berechiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Neto Fathites. The gatekeepers of the Levites, the gatekeepers were Shalum, Akub, Talom, Ahiman, and their brethren. Shalom was a chief until then they had been gatekeepers of the, for the camps of the children of Levi at the king's gate on the east. Shalom, the son of Korah and the son of Abiasaf, the son of Korah and his brethren from his father's house. The Korahites were in charge of the work of the service, gatekeepers of the tabernacle. And father, their fathers had been keepers of the entrance to the camp of the Lord. And Pinehas, the son of Eleazar, had been the officer over them in time past, and these were with him. Zechariah, the son of Meshelemiah, was keeper of the door of the tabernacle of the testimony. All those chosen as gatekeepers were 212, and in the villages they were recorded by their genealogy. David and Samuel, the seer, appointed them for their faithfulness. So they and their sons were to guard the gates of the house of the Lord, the house of the tabernacle, the gatekeepers were assigned to the four directions, the east, west, north, and south, and their brethren in the villages had to come with them from time to time for seven days. For in this trusted office were four chief gatekeepers, they were Levites. They had charge over chambers and treasuries of the house of God, and they remained around about the house of God, for they had charge over the keys to unlock the doors of the temple every morning. Other work of the Levites. Now some of them were in charge of the servicing vessels, for they brought them in and took them out by count. Some of them were appointed over the furnishings and over the 
implements of the sanctuary and over the fine flour and the wine and the oil and the incense and the spices. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices, Matithia of the Levites, the firstborn of Shalom, the Korahite, was entrusted over the items of the sacrificial offering from the chief priest's frying pan. The ba and Banaias, the Kohathite, out of their brethren, was in charge of preparing the showbread for every Sabbath. These are, the, these are the singers, heads of the houses of the fathers of the Levites, who were assigned daily, freed from their duty, for they were employed in their work day and night. These heads of the houses of the fathers of the Levites were heads throughout the generations. They dwelt in Jerusalem. Family line of King Saul. Jael, the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Makah, dwelt at Gibeon. His firstborn son was Abdon, then Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. And Mikloth begat Shimea. They also dwelt alongside their relatives in Jerusalem with their brethren. Ner begot Kish, Kish begot Saul, and Saul begot Jonathan. Malchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. The sons of Jonathan were Meribbal, and Meribbal begot Mika. The sons of Mika were Pithon, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begot Jara. Jara, Jara begot Elemeth, as Maveth, and Zimri. And Zimri begot Moza. Moza begot Binea, Raphaia, his son. Elasea his son, and Azel his son. And Azel had six sons whose names were Azrikam, Bokeru, Ishmael, and Sheriah. Obadiah and Hanan, these were the sons of Azel. The death of Saul and his sons, chapter 10. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed after, hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed the sons of Saul, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The battle became fierce against Saul, and he was wounded by the archers who struck him. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and pierce me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and dishonor me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled, that Saul and his sons were dead, and that they left their cities fleeing, then the Philistines came and dwelt in them. So it happened the next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his sons dead on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of their gods and feasted and fastened his head to the temple of Dagon. And when all of Jabez and Gilead heard that the Philistines, what the Philistines did to Saul, all the valiant men arose from Gilead and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons back with them to Jabesh. They buried their bodies under the oak tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his lawlessness, which he committed against the Lord according to the word of God, because he did not keep it. And because Saul sought counsel of a wizard, and Samuel the prophet answered him. So he slew him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11. David is king of all Israel. Then all Israel came to David at Hebron, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. Also in time past, even when Saul was king, it was you who led Israel in and out. And the Lord your God said to you, You shall feed my people Israel and be rule over Israel. Therefore all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and David made a covenant with them at Hebron, before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. And the king and all Israel went to Jerusalem. This is Jebu, 
and there the Jebusites were inhabited inhabiting the land. And the people inhabited Jebu said to David, You shall not enter here. But he seized the stronghold of Mount Zion, which is the city of David. And David said, Whoever first strikes the Jebusites shall be chief and captain. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah, went up first and became chief. Then David dwelt in the stronghold. Thereafter he called it the city of David. And he waged war and took the city. Around it he fortified the city. So David grew even stronger, and the Lord Almighty was with him. David's mighty men. Now these were the heads of the mighty men whom David had with him, who strengthened themselves in his kingdom with all Israel to make him king, according to the word of the Lord regarding Israel. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Jeshobeam, the son of Hakmonite, chief of the captains, he lifted up his spear against 300 and killed them all at once. After him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahothite, who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David in Pazdamim, and the Philistines gathered there for battle near a field full of barley, and the people fled from the sight of the Philistines. And he stood in the midst of the field and preserved it and killed the Philistines. The Lord brought about a great deliverance. Now three of the, thir the thirty chief men went down to the rock towards David, to the cave of Ad Adulam. The encampment of the Philistines was set up in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the, the gate. So the three broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem by the gate, and took it and brought some to David. Nevertheless, David did not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, God, be merciful to me. Should I do what was spoken? Shall I drink the blood of these men with their lives? For they brought it with their lives in peril. Therefore he was not willing to drink it. The three mighty men did, this, the, 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 did these things. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of, among, of another three, and he lifted up his spear against 300 men, killed them, and won a name among these three. Of these three, he was more favored than the other two men and was chief over them, but of the three of them he did not go. Banair was the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man from Kabzeel, who had done mighty deeds. He had killed two ruffians of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a man of great height, five cubits tall. In the hand of the Egyptian there was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, did, and won a name among three mighty men. Indeed, he was honored more than his thirty, but he did not attain to the first three, and David appointed him over his family. And the mighty warriors were Ashahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamoth, the Hararite, Hazel, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Anathothite, Sibekai, the Hushathite, Eliah, the Hahothite, Maharai, the Netophathite, Heled, the son of Bana, the Netophathite, Ithai, the son of Rebai of Gibeon, of the sons of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Pirathothite, Pirathonite, Huriah of the brooks of Gash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, the Baharumite, Eli Abba, the Shalmobanite, the sons of Hashem, and Gizonite, Jonathan, the son of Shage, the Hararite, Ahiam, the son of Sakar, the Ararite, Eliphal, the son of Ur, Hefer, the Mekarathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Naria, the son of Asbal, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, the son of Hagri, Zelek, the Ammonite, Nahariah, the Berathite, 
the armor bearer of Joab the son of Zeruah, Ira the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zadab the son of Halai, Adina the son of Shiza the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan the son of Makkah, Josephat the Mithnite, Uzziah the Ashterathite, Shammah and Zael the sons of Hotham and Aroerite, Jediel the son of Shimri, and Zohar his brother the Zittite, Eliel the Mahavite, Jeribai and Joshua Vea the sons of Elmana, Elanam, Ithma the Moabite, Ethiel, Obed, and Jasiel the Mesobite. Chapter 12 David's army expands. Now these were the men who came to David at Ziklag while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. They were among the mighty men, helpless in the war, being armed with both bows for shooting, arrows, and using either their right or left hand for slinging stones. They were Benjamin, Saul's brethren. The chief was Ahiezer, then Joash, the son of Shema, the Gibbethite, Jeziel and Peleb, the sons of Asmaveth, Barakan and Jehu, the Athanathite, Ishmaiah, the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty and over the thirty, Jeremiah, Jahaziel, Johanan, and Josabad, the Gedarathite, Eluzai, Jerimoth, Bealia, Shemariah, and Shephatia, the Harufite. Elkanah, Jishia, Azarel, Joser, and Jashobean, the Korahites, and Jola and Jebadiah, the sons of Jeroham of Gedor. Some Gadites joined David in the wilderness, strong, mighty men of war, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions and who were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Ezra the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atal the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, El Zabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbanai the eleventh. These were from the sons of Gad, captains of the army. The least was over a hundred, and the greatest was over a thousand. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month, when it had overflowed all its banks and they put to flight all those in the valleys to the east and to the west. And some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to aid David at the stronghold. David went out to meet them and addressed them by saying, If you have come peacefully to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no guile in my hands, may the God of our fathers observe and bring judgment. And the Spirit came upon Amasai, a captain of the thirty, and he said, Go you and your people, David, son of Jesse. Peace, peace be to you, and peace to your helpers, for your God has helped you. And David received them and made them captains of the forces, and some from Manasseh defected to David when he was going with the Philistines to battle against Saul, but they did not help him, for the lords of the Philistines sent him away by agreement, saying, He may defect to his master Saul and endanger our heads. When he went to Ziklag, those of Manasseh who defected to him were Adna, Josabad, Zediel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilethai, captains of the thousands who were from Manasseh. And they helped David against the bands of raiders, for they were all mighty men of valor, and they were captains in the army. For at that time they came to David day by day to help him, until it was a great army like the army of God. The soldiers at Hebron. Now there were the numbers of the, these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war and that came to David at Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul over to him, according to the word of the Lord, of the sons of Judah bearing shield and spear, 6,800 armed for war. Of the sons of Simeon, mighty men of valor fit for war, 7,100. Of the sons of Levi, 4,600, Jehoiada, the leader of Aaronites, and with him 3,700, Zadok, a young man, a valiant warrior, 
and from his father's house 22 captains. Of the sons of Benjamin, relatives of Saul, 3,000, until they then the greatest part of them had remained loyal to the house of Saul. Of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800 mighty men of valor, noted men throughout the house of their fathers. Of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 who were designed, designated by name, to come and make David king. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and their brethren were at their command. Of Zebulun, there were 50,000 who went out to battle, experts in war with all weapons of war, stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. Of Naphtali, 1,000 captains, and with them 37,000 with shield and spear. Of the Danites who could keep battle formation, 28,600. Of Asher, those who could go out to war, able to keep battle formation, 40,000. Of the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh from the other side of the Jordan, 120,000 armed for battle with every kind of weapon of war. All these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. All these men of war who could keep ranks in a peaceful spirit came to Hebron to make David king over all Israel, and they were there with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, those who were near them, from as far away as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, were bringing food on donkeys and camels, on mules and oxen, provisions of flour, cake and cakes of figs, cakes of raisins, wine, oil, and oxen, and sheep abundantly, for there was joy in Israel. And now we continue with New Testament. Philippians chapter 1. Greeting. Paul and Timothy, bondservants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace to God, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you, all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve of the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Paul's suffering in prison. But I, I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains are much more bold to speak of words without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambitions, not sincerity, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectations, and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. But with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet what I shall choose I cannot tell, for I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is, our, is far better. 
Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Be steadfast in suffering. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit and one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you a salvation, and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. Chapter 2. Preserve unity in humility. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness or mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was always, all which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall, ba knee shall bow, and of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. Strive for obedience. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Apostolic Support for Philippi Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all, for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state, for I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state, for all seek their own, not the things which are for Jesus Christ, but you know his proven character, that as a son with his father he served with me in the gospel. Therefore I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epiphroditos, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need, since he was longing for you all, and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick almost unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I sent him the more eagerly that you, that when you see him again you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem, because for the work of Christ he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. And we'll continue tomorrow. God bless you and thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media.
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.